Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 23rd of November 2020 and the time has just gone 8.58 GMT. And it's been a fairly positive start to the European trading session. Um, not long ago, not too long ago, in the last couple of hours, hour and a half, uh, we heard some extra additional positive news in relation to a possible vaccine for the for COVID-19. Uh, AstraZeneca and the University of Oxford are working on a, on a drug and it was announced that uh, on average um, the effectiveness rate is just over 70%. Um, in two kind of uh, kind of trials or, or rounds of, of, of the drug, uh, one of the results was 90% effective while the other one was 62%. Uh, on a more practical basis it can be stored and transported in um, at minus three degrees south, minus minus three degrees, um, so it makes it m much more um, practical from a logistical point of view and a production point of view. So even though the headline headline effectiveness rate isn't on, on you know isn't as high as that posted by the likes of Moderna and Pfizer and Pfizer and BioNTech, uh, it's still actually look, looking looking quite looking quite promising. So this story has kind of helped stock market uh, helped stock markets um, gain ground. It, you know, the sentiment was re was reasonably positive on index futures markets, anyways, but before this was announced. So this has just been an, another um, shot in the arm to the uh, to the overall uh, sentiment in the equity markets. Um, you know, recapping on results uh, we heard last week, there was a lot of optimism in relation to the um, the the, the drugs that, that Pfizer and BioNTech are, are working on. Same goes for, for with the uh, Moderna drug. Um, there is there is speculation and there's hope that the um, the Pfizer and BioNTech drug could be available. Um, could be could receive authorization uh, by the by the UK regulator um, this week. Uh, back in the last week, Pfizer and BioNTech uh, requested um, that the FDA, the US regulator, um, approve their drugs. So things are moving in the right direction. So we're seeing an overall lift in, in, in stock markets. The, the drug story, the vaccine story, keeps, continues to be the headline news. Um, also, what, what's going to be in play in the next few weeks and months, uh, probably, is going to be the US stimulus package. Um, at the back end of the last week, we heard that the, the, there were going to be uh, the re recommencement of talks between Democrats and Republicans in relation to the, the stimulus package. Now, keep in mind, it was dragging on for months, for weeks and months uh, before the U.S. election. There's probably no guarantee that it's going to be resolved quickly, uh, but, but you know, be aware that that's going to be talked about for the time being. Um, but before the U.S. presidential election, there was a huge gap between what both sides wanted. Certain elements of the Democratic Party uh, the Democrats wanted uh, a two trillion dollar package, um, where, where, the, where, the, where, the, where the some Republicans were some were aiming for somewhere in the region of a few hundred million. So there's a huge gap between what both sides wanted, but things are not going to change uh, with the um, with the with the U.S. election. Now um, I will run through the major events of the week and then move on to the major markets. Um, the weekend article can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com, under insights, latest news and analysis, scrolling down, um, today we've already had the figures out from uh, Daily Mail, um, the newspaper group. Um, we've also had manufacturing numbers and service numbers coming out uh, well, well, from Germany and France. We're also going to be having manufacturing and service numbers coming out from the UK in, in a, uh, shortly. Tomorrow, AO World, uh, the online retailer, uh, you can specialize in uh, electrical goods and, 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 and the likes. Uh, they have pulled your numbers out. They are one of the beneficiaries of the um, of the of the lockdown because e-commerce just went through the roof um, at, at the expense of traditional retailers. Uh, Best Buy over in the US, they, they they've um, they managed to do quite well. They're particularly on the, once again on the online front um, because e-commerce has really taken off. Uh, Compass Group. Uh, they have full your numbers coming out tomorrow as well. Um, HB over in, over in the in the US have four quarter numbers. Uh, US consumer confidence will be posted on Tuesday tomorrow. Uh, on Wednesday, um, we have numbers out from Deer. To be honest, it's a bit of a pretty quiet week in terms of corporate stories, and it's not going to be overly busy. Um, um, on Wednesday, we have uh, the Fed minutes from the US. Let's face it, the Federal Reserve aren't exactly going to be doing a whole lot um, in terms of their um, 
alteration to monetary policy anytime soon. So the minutes um, from, from the update should give, should give us a, bit, a, bit, bit, for a bit, bit of a better idea of what the Fed are thinking. Uh, also Wednesday, uh, we have U.S. personal spending and final GDP, uh, the third quarter GDP that is. Um, the spending figure is going to be interesting because this will be the kind of acid test of how willing are Americans to go out and actually spend money. Now, in the last in the last few days, there's been an increase. There's been continued worried about the, the rate of increased COVID cases in the U.S. So a number of states, including California um, and you know, in New York City, have had um, a bringing in tighter restrictions. Um, so we could see a tapering off in economic activity, you know, say from here on. But the, the spending figures will be interesting to see how much Americans are actually willing to go out and spend money. Uh, there's also going to be a spending review in relation to from the UK in relation to how much money has been set has been basically thrown at the COVID-19 crisis. What kind of taxes could we be looking at uh, as a way of recouping that? Uh, on Thursday, we have third quarter numbers coming out from Aviva, the insurance company. Um, to be honest, this week, as you can see by, see by the calendar, it's not going to be overly exciting, to be perfectly honest. And if you do see any action in terms of volatility, it's likely to be in the first few days of the week because Thursday, the U.S. markets will be closed for the Thanksgiving holiday. And there'll be a lot, there'll be some markets will have limited hours in the U.S. on Friday. And we could even see, um, we often see a lot of American tra traders and investors take both days off or at least one day off. So, so around the kind of Thanksgiving itself and the, and, and the Friday afterwards tend to be pretty quiet. Um, starting off now with the FTSE 100, I did the usual structure where I do the major indices, the major currency pairs, and the major commodities. So as we can see here from the FTSE 100, it's been in a strong upward trend uh, basically um, from, from late, from late good, good October, October um, the highest I saw uh, last, last week, week highest, 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 highest I've ever seen since, since June. We, we, we've had, we've had, had a bit of a pullback ever so slightly, right, but we are actually higher, so we're still very much in this kind of upward trend. If we press on higher from here and we take out the highs of last Monday, we could then be looking at targeting the highs that were achieved in June. That, that comes into play at 6,513. Any moves to the downside could find some support from the lows of last week in around 6,000. 258 or maybe down towards the kind of 6,200 mark um, but if we, but if, move, if we move below that we could be heading back down toward this red line here the during the moving average and that comes into play at 6,070 and, and notice how that metric acted nicely as support uh, back in the middle of the month and if a metric has been of importance in the past it makes it more likely it will be of importance in the future although there are no guarantees. Taking a look at what's going on over in Germany on the DAX. So as we can see here, the, 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 we're currently basically kind of running up against the highs that were achieved uh, a couple of Mondays ago, back at the start of the month, which, which is also driven by vaccine, uh, vaccine optimism. This, this could be quite significant if you break above this, just because there's been a few occasions where we tried to move, move higher. We can't really get higher. The upward trend is still very much in play. It seems to me uh, that the market is kind of, you know, clearly retesting the highs of um, of a couple of Mondays ago. If we do manage to break beyond this level, we could be looking at retargeting the highs of, of early September in a 13,462. And keep in mind those highs that were achieved back in um, back in back in uh, early September. They were the highest level achieved since late February. And if you take out and if we if you take out those highs. We could then be looking at retesting the all-time highs, which were achieved just before the crisis really took hold in Europe. And those highs are in around 13,786. And to the downside, should we move lower? Um, keep in mind that the, the, the trend has been very much a strong upward trend the last few weeks and months. If we move lower, uh, we could be looking heading back down towards these moving averages here. We got the the uh, the water the moving average is the yellow line here, and the 50 moving average is, is the blue line here and the, the two metrics are not too far away from each other and as we can see in the last few weeks and months all those metrics or in or around those metrics maybe not precisely on those lines we have seen both support and resistance from those metrics in the last few weeks, weeks and months <clears throat> so if we do have a fairly decent move to the downside we could find support from this general zone here in around uh, 12,825 
uh, down to around 12,740 feet. So, so that area could act as support should we move lower. But keep in mind how much gr ground we travel between the lows of late October and here. So even if we do pull back to this zone, this general area, we'd still the upper trend would still be intact. Looking at what's going on over in the US, I'll start off with the Dow Jones. Up to the seminar at the very beginning of the month, um, we, we, we skyrocketed. Uh, we had another major move to the upside last Monday, so things are still very much looking to the upside on the um, on the on the on the Dow Jones. You know, if we could look to press on higher from here, because we're currently trading around twenty nine thousand four hundred and sixty five. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at heading, kind of retesting the kind of thirty thousand zone, and if we go beyond that. That should uh, that'll be fresh all-time highs, and I mean, that should pave the way for further gains. A move to the downside could find support from this area here in around 28,868, and a move below that could take us back down towards this blue line here, the 50-day moving average at 28,181. And once again, you can see a few, a few, on a few occasions that metric acted nicely as support in the last few weeks and months. So once again, it could be of importance in the future. Take a look at what's going on with the, S with the S&P 500. Similar scenario here, whereby an all-time high was achieved um, in er at, the at the beginning of the month, or before the, before the start of November. Uh, the highs that were achieved in the middle of the month, the month uh, didn't we carry the S&P 500, but notice how the most, most recent lows were so well above the lows low that were achieved um, not too long after the, the all-time high was hit. So we're still in the upward trend. If we can look the press on higher from here, we could be looking at you know, heading towards 3,600. If we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the highs of mid-November in at 3,640. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the all-time highs at 3,674. Any pullbacks could find support from this zone here at 3,511. And if we go below, below that, we could be looking at heading back down toward this blue line here, 50 moving average. You know, similar scenario, there's been a fair bit of we, we saw it act as both support and resistance uh, in October. We saw a fair bit of consolidation around that metric uh, in, in early October and it acted nicely as support uh, back in September as well. And even if you go below that, we could find support from this yellow line here, the water the moving average at 3,382. In a similar scenario, it acted nicely as support back in late September, but granted it uh, had, had quite aggressive move below it uh, in October, but once once it got back above it, it, it then started to, it kind of resumed its um, its, its uh, supporting role there. So keep an eye out for that metric too. Turning our attention now to what's the, the big currency pairs, starting off at pound dollar. Brexit talks are going to be, um, once again, in, in, in focus. There's a report over the weekend, one of the UK newspapers talking about how you know, Boris Johnson is gearing up for a big intervention on, on the on, on the issue. Uh, so that's, so that it looks like the Prime Minister is keen to get a deal, but there's obviously the caveat is nothing, you know, nothing is agreed until everything is agreed. Uh, so there is there is room for kind of talks to break down. But this here is the pound versus the US dollar. There's major political uncertainty in relation to the, the UK's future relationship with the EU. But if you look at the price action, the markets are behaving as if as if a deal is going to be achieved. Um, you know, in fact, today's level was the highest level seen in pound dollar since early early September. So we're talking, you know, about we're talking multi month multi month highs uh, achieving on the current fair. It it continues to be in the kind of upward trend of the last few weeks and months. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at target targeting um, the, well, the highs are just beyond September and if we go beyond the highs of September we could be looking at heading to one spot 30 one spot 3515 level last seen about a year ago it was uh, December last year 13515 was achieved uh, any move that a downside could find support in around the kind of one spot 32 area and if we go below that we could find support from this zone here in at one spot 3106. That is the pound versus the dollar. Coming on to the euro versus the US dollar. 
uh, euro dollar as, as the, the broader upward trend of the last few months remains in place. Keep in mind, it has been kind of range bound recently, but nonetheless, while we hold above this blue line here, the 50 moving average, it's like a, a kind of wider uptrend could remain intact. Let's quickly change that, get a better view of it. It's like a, a kind of wider upward trend. If you can hold it, continue to hold above this blue line here, it's like a, a broader upward trend of the last few weeks and months is going to remain intact. And should that be the case, we could be like heading back up towards this level here, the, air, the highs of early September, just north of one spot 20. And keep in mind those levels, that, that the level that was achieved then was actually a multi-year high. It was the highest level uh, in, in a couple of years. Yeah, it was the highest level since May 2018. Uh, a few amounts have drifted a bit lower on the uh, on the euro versus the dollar. Support could, could come into play from the 50 moving average, this blue line here, in at one spot, 17.75. And a move below that could take us back down toward this zone here, uh, down around one spot, 16.12, down, you know, one spot, 16.02. And this area w w w could be a pretty important area of... We can see a few times it was supported nicely, this general area is here, so if we do have a break below that, that could be quite significant, and that could take us potentially back down to down the one spot, spot in area. area. Coming out to gold now. To be honest, gold's been relatively quiet. Obviously, it had a major move to the downside um, at the beginning of the month on the back when the kind of first big vac vaccine story broke. So it put major pressure on, on the on the um on the gold market, but notice how the, the lows of the lows uh, on Monday the 9th still didn't manage to take off the lows that were achieved in late September. So it seems to me that the kind of 1848, 1850 zone is is is, uh, is, is quite significant. If we can hold above that, perhaps the, the kind of the broader upward trend of gold, which has been in place for for a while is going to remain intact but, th but that's on the kind of the basis that if you could hold above 1850 1848 it is clearly worth noting that the kind of the, the recent trend the last few sessions has been to the downside um so if you break below 1848 it could take us back down towards the kind of 1800 mark uh, and it kind of moves below that yeah. so we take a look below Eight, we take out 1800, it could easily put us, sorry, apologies, we take out 1848, uh, it could easily take us back down towards this area here in around the kind of 1800 zone. Any move to the upside could run into resistance from, well, first of all, keep an eye for this blue line, the 50 moving average in at 1898, just just south of the kind of you know, psychology port 1900 mark. They can, we can notice here how um, the 50 moving average acted as support in early September and acted as resistance on a couple of occasions. Now, granted, when it had the surge in volatility and in this area, it completely kind of just you know, smashed, up, you know, broke above it and then broke well, well back, back below it. But keep an eye on that on the metric. And same goes for this yellow line here, the 100 moving average in at 1910. And once again, we can see that acted as support and resistance in the last few weeks and months. And lastly, coming on to the oil market. Now, oil has done quite well recently. Um, it, you know, this, the oil market tends to kind of move in 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 step with the overall kind of sentiment uh, about how the the perceived perception of the of the health of the global economy and all the kind of vaccine hopes have really kind of spurred on buying in oil recently. In fact, today. Uh, we've hit level last seen <clears throat> in early September, so we're talking, you know, multi-month highs, multi-week highs have been racked up in the uh, in the oil market. This here is Brent crude, the January contract, and if you continue to press on higher from here, we can retest the highs uh, of August, and that comes into play in at forty-six, sorry, forty-seven dollars and thirty-one cents. Any move to the downside, I couldn't find support in this yellow line here. The one to move the average at forty-three spots, sixteen. And also, and also again, again, it's up, 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 it's up,
in a 42 spot 37 could act as support also we know of similar scenario it acted as you know we saw active resistance in the middle of october and in early early no, early no, no, november it acted as support so please keep an eye out for those metrics uh that's all from this video thank you for listening have a good trading week and good luck